Emergency Childbirth, Wikipedia Audio Emergency childbirth is the birth of an infant in places or situations other than what was planned. In most cases the location of childbirth is planned ahead of time and may be at home, a hospital, a medical facility or a birthing center. In other situations, the birth occurs on the way to these facilities. Oftentimes, no trained medical personnel are present, other times there may be police or other first responders. Emergency measures for delivery are indicated when childbirth is imminent. Each year more than 250,000 women around the world die from complications due to childbirth or pregnancy, with bleeding and hypertension as the leading causes. Many of these deaths are preventable by emergency care, which include antibiotics, drugs that stimulate contraction of the uterus, anti-seizure drugs, blood transfusion, and delivery of baby with assistance or C-section. In 2012, 1.36% of births took place outside of a hospital, and this number has been increasing over the last 30 years. This is likely a combination of more home deliveries and deliveries at birth centers, with 66% occurring at home and 29% in birthing centers. In a study of home deliveries in the US and Canada, about 12% of attempted home deliveries required urgent transport to hospital for more specialized care. Reasons for transfer include failure of labor to progress, maternal exhaustion or need for more pain medication, or maternal-slash-fetal complications. Background Pregnant women usually seek medical care throughout pregnancy and plan for the birth of a baby with a health care team. In an emergency childbirth situation, it is recommended to seek further education and make a plan. Early Preparation any gush of fluid? This would indicate that the rupture of membranes has occurred releasing amniotic fluid and that labor will probably begin soon if the patient is near term. Any vaginal bleeding? Could indicate a bloody show, a small amount of bloody discharge prior to labor, or if large amounts of bleeding occurred it could indicate potentially life-threatening complications. How frequent are her contractions? One common recommendation is the patient may be in active labor if contractions are five minutes apart for one hour, does she feel the urge to push with her contractions? This is an indication delivery will occur soon. Many childbirth education classes cover emergency birth procedures. Parents are trained to learn the signs of early labor or other indications that may require assistance. Caregivers can take a class on infant and child life support. Some recommend having a kit of emergency supplies in the home such as, clean towels, sheets, clean scissors, sterile gloves, sanitary pads, diapers, and instructions for infant rescue breathing. Late Preparation Additional help may be found by calling 911 or an applicable number to get emergency medical services or nearby medical staff. A vehicle driven safely toward medical care may be considered an acceptable option during the first stage of labor. During the second stage of labor, a vehicle is usually stopped unless imminently arriving at a medical facility. If a vehicle is taken, Additional occupants can support the mother and baby should assist in delivery. The mother and baby are kept warm throughout. If unable to reach a medical facility, a safe building with walls and a roof are sought that will provide protection from the environment. A warm and dry area with a bed is preferable. Inspect to see if there is any presenting part of the baby. The baby's head will feel hard versus their buttocks will feel soft, if the baby's head is presenting out of the vagina, 
then delivery will be happening soon and preparation should begin to deliver the baby, trained physicians would conduct a manual cervical exam to determine the patient's cervical dilation. Supplies are collected for both the mother and the baby. Possible supplies may include blankets, pillows, towels, warm clean water, warm water bottles, soap, clean towels, baby clothes, sheets, sterile gloves, sanitary pads, diapers, identification tags for mother and baby, and instructions for infant rescue breathing. A bed may be prepared for the baby with a basket or box lined with a blanket or sheets. Items are needed to clamp or tie the umbilical cord in two places. Shoestrings or strips of a sheet folded into narrow bands may be used. These items can be sterilized by boiling or soaking in alcohol. Scissors or a knife are needed to cut the umbilical cord and may be sterilized with the same procedure. A background obstetric history should be obtained, how many prior births has the patient had, how many weeks along is she or what is her estimated date of delivery, any special concerns related to this pregnancy such as being told she has twins, being told she has a complication, or even if she has received regular prenatal care. Any other relevant medical history, allergies, drugs, Recent signs of infections should be asked. Preparation Signs and Symptoms Physical Exam If time permits and if trained, one should obtain vital signs to include maternal heart rate, respiratory rate, blood pressure, temperature, and oxygen rate. The patient should be draped with available blankets for privacy. The patient's abdomen should be examined and felt for the presence of contractions, and the intensity, frequency, and length of contractions should be noted. With the patient's permission and privacy, an exam of the pelvic area should be performed, in general, one would. After the physical exam and if the patient is not crowning, the patient should be placed in the left lateral decubitus position. Evaluation Delivery of term baby in normal position First stage of labor, dilation and effacement of the cervix Maternal complications Vaginal bleeding and shock First trimester bleeding Convulsions Fetal care this stage of labor may last from 2 to 18 hours. Further care may be sought during this time. Second stage, cervix is dilated. This stage may last from 5 minutes to 3 hours. Complications Third stage of labor, the delivery of the placenta. The baby is attached to the placenta by the umbilical cord. After the cord is cut, the placenta is usually still inside the mother. The placenta usually comes out in 2-10 minutes, but it may take up to 60 minutes. Complications of emergency childbirth include the complications that occur during normal childbirth. Maternal complications include perineal tearing during delivery, excessive bleeding, retained products of conception in the uterus, hypertension, and seizures. In a pregnant woman, 40% of the circulating blood volume is in the uterus. This creates a large bleeding potential and high risk of hemorrhagic shock. For this reason, constant vigilance is important if any of the following occur. Vaginal bleeding early or late in pregnancy. Severe abdominal pain Trauma while pregnant In culture Uncontrolled vaginal bleeding after the baby is delivered Inability to remove the entire placenta after the baby is delivered 
Causes of vaginal bleeding early in pregnancy include miscarriage, embryo implantation, and growth outside the uterus, and placenta attachment at the bottom of the uterus over the cervix, all of which can cause significant bleeding. Bleeding after the first trimester and during delivery Prior to and during delivery, bleeding can also occur from tears in the cervix, vagina, or perineum, sudden placental detachment and placental attachment over the cervix, and uterine rupture. Bleeding after delivery After delivery of the baby, a uterus that is not contracting, ruptured uterus, remaining parts of placenta or baby or infected remaining parts of placenta or baby can cause severe bleeding. Postpartum bleeding is usually managed preventatively by massaging the lower abdomen, which increases contraction of the uterus and stops bleeding. Additionally, steady traction is applied to the cord to prevent trauma, cord avulsion, uterine inversion, and retained placental products, all of which can increase blood loss and slash or the risk of infection. Postpartum hemorrhage is defined by loss of more than 500 ml blood within 24 hours after delivery. It is difficult to predict with few known risk factors and occurs in 3% of women, leading to 150,000 annual deaths worldwide. Once uncontrolled bleeding occurs, management can be manual and pharmacological. Alongside these treatments, Shock should be addressed with four fluids or blood transfusions as discussed below. Severe blood loss leading to shock In shock, you may see cold clammy skin, pale skin, sweating, anxiousness, and loss of consciousness. You may note a fast heartbeat, low blood pressure, and decreased urine output. The woman should be laid on her left side, with legs and buttocks elevated to encourage blood flow back to the heart with gravity. If available, four fluids should be started with monitoring of her heart rate, blood pressure, and appearance. If available, two large bore 4 catheters should be used to rapidly infuse 1L in 15-20 minutes, with the goal of giving 2L in the first hour. If unable to start and four and the woman is able to drink and is conscious with no recent convulsions, give 300 to 500 ml of fluid by mouth. If the woman is unable to drink, is unconscious, or has recently had convulsions, fluid can be given rectally with an enema bag or can. Fill the enema with 500 ml for fluid. Clamp the end of the tube and insert 10 cm into the rectum. If filling an enema, run water slowly or cramping can occur, pushing the water back out. Convulsions in pregnancy can be caused by pregnancy-specific causes of seizures such as eclampsia and by normal causes of seizures such as epilepsy. Warning signs that may lead to convulsions include preeclampsia which is a condition that pregnant women can get after 20 weeks of pregnancy that is characterized by new onset high blood pressure, headaches, blurry vision, trouble breathing from fluid in lungs, protein in urine from kidney failure, and elevated liver enzymes from liver dysfunction, and possibly coagulation defects from platelet dysfunction. If a pregnant woman begins to have convulsions, additional help and assistance should be sought. One should not restrain the patient, but lie her down on her left side and check the airway. Turning the patient on her side decreases risk of breathing in vomit and spit. If available, magnesium sulfate is the preferred treatment for seizures in pregnant women starting with a dose of 4 mg for over 5 minutes. A sensation of warmth during infusion is normal, however, there is also a risk of stopping breathing with magnesium sulfate use, which would indicate the dosage is too high. If this occurs, 
calcium gluconate can be used to reverse the effects. In general, make sure the breathing rate is at least 16 breaths per minute and the knee jerk reflex is still intact before giving more magnesium sulfate. If magnesium sulfate is unavailable, diazepam can be used to treat convulsions in pregnancy. The first dose, the loading dose, should be 10 mg of diazepam for given over 2 minutes. After this, the loading dose can be repeated. The maintenance dose is 40 mg of diazepam in 500 ml for fluids. The amount of diazepam used should never be more than 100 mg in 24 hours and it should be dosed in order to keep the woman awake, rousable, and breathing rate above 16 breaths per minute. Almost 10% of newborns require some resuscitative care. Common complications of childbirth that relate to the baby include breech presentation, shoulder dystocia, infection, and umbilical cord wrapped around the baby's neck. Evaluation The newborn is evaluated at 1 and 5 minutes after birth using the APGAR score, which assigns points based on appearance, pulse, grimace, activity, and respiration with each component scored from 0 to 2. Scores below 7 generally require further care. Routine care After initial evaluation, babies with good APGAR scores are dried and rubbed, any obstruction of breathing is cleared, and they are warmed either with skin-to-skin -skin contact with the mother or under a heat source. With United States home births as an estimate, Neonatal complications are common, with cord wrapped around the head 12 to 37 percent of the time, insufficient oxygenation 9 percent of the time, pulselessness 6 percent of the time, and breech presentation 3 percent of the time. Breech presentation Normally, the head is the first part of the body to present out of the birth canal. However, other parts such as the buttocks or feet can present first, which is referred to as breech presentation. Risk for breech presentation may increase with multiple pregnancies, when there is too little or too much fluid in the uterus, or if the uterus is abnormally shaped. Babies in breech presentation can be delivered vaginally depending on the experience of the provider and if the fetus meets specific low risk criteria. However C-section is recommended if available. Ideally, vaginal breech delivery should not be performed without the availability of nearby emergency C-section capabilities and extensive efforts should be made to bring a woman in labor with breech presentation to a hospital. There are many variations of breech presentations and multiple ways the baby can get stuck during delivery. If a breech delivery is occurring, the provider will guide the hips out by giving light, downward traction holding the pelvis until the scapula is present. Then at the level of the armpits, each shoulder is delivered by rotating the baby as required, then subsequently rotating 180 degrees to deliver the other shoulder. The head is delivered with careful attention to the baby's arms. The arms will be delivered downwards through the vulva and may have to be gently held downwards by the provider's fingers. Preterm labor Incidence of preterm delivery is approximately 12%, and preterm births are a significant contributing cause of unplanned emergency delivery. Preterm labor is defined as occurring before 37 weeks and risks for preterm labor include pregnancy with multiple fetuses, prior history of premature labor, structural abnormalities of the cervix or uterus, urinary tract, vaginal, or sexually transmitted infections, high blood pressure, drug use, diabetes, blood disorders, or pregnancy occurring less than six months after a prior pregnancy.
The same principles of term emergency delivery apply to emergency delivery for a preterm fetus, though the baby will be at higher risk of other problems such as low birth weight, trouble breathing, and infections. The newborn will need additional medical care and monitoring after delivery and should be taken to a hospital providing neonatal care, which may include antibiotics and breathing treatments. Shoulder Dystocia In shoulder dystocia, the shoulder is trapped after the head is delivered, preventing delivery of the rest of the baby. The major risk factor is the baby being too large, which can result from the mother being obese or gaining too much weight, diabetes, and the pregnancy lasting too long. Shoulder dystocia can lead to further fetal complications such as nerve compression and injury at the shoulder, fracture of the collarbone, and low oxygen for the fetus. Shoulder dystocia is often signaled by retreat of the head between contractions when it has already been delivered. Treatment includes the McRoberts maneuver, where the mother flexes her thighs up to her stomach with her knees wide apart as pressure is applied on her lower abdomen, and would screw maneuver, where the deliverer inserts a hand into the vagina to rotate the fetus. If all maneuvers fail, then C-section would be indicated. Prolapsed cord A prolapsed cord refers to an umbilical cord that is delivered from the uterus while the baby is still in the uterus and is life-threatening to the baby. Cord prolapse creates a risk of decreased blood flow to the baby as delivery will cause cord compression. However, if the cord delivers before the baby, the cord should not be placed back into the uterus through the cervix since this increases risk of infection. Emergent obstetric care for C-section would be indicated, and in the meantime, one should elevate the foot of the bed if possible to attempt to keep the baby above the level of the cord. If no specialized care is available, one may attempt to reduce pressure of the cord manually and continue delivery but also being prepared to clamp and cut the cord if needed. Nuchal cord After the baby crowns, the umbilical cord may be found to be wrapped around the neck or body of the baby, which is known as nuchal cord. This is common, occurring in up to 37% of term pregnancies, and most do not cause any long-term problems. This wrapped cord should be slipped over the head so it is not pulled during delivery. If the wrap is not removed, it can choke the baby or can cause the placenta to detach suddenly which can cause severe maternal bleeding and loss of blood and oxygen to the baby. The cord may also be wrapped around a limb in breech presentation, and should similarly be reduced in these cases. Resuscitation if the baby is not doing well on its own, further care may be necessary. Resuscitation typically starts with warming, drying, and stimulating the newborn. If breathing difficulty is noted, the airway is opened and cleared with suction and oxygen is monitored. If necessary, one may consider using in positive airway pressure ventilator or intubation. If the heart rate is below 60 beats per minute, CPR is started at 3 colon 1 compression to ventilation ratio, with compressions given at the lower breast bone. If this fails to revive the newborn, epinephrine will be given. Resuscitation is not indicated for newborns below 22 weeks of gestation and weighing below 400 grams. Resuscitation may also be discontinued if the baby's heart does not start after 10-15 minutes of full resuscitation. The reports of emergency childbirth are typically of general interest. A mobile app was developed in Ethiopia that guides users through the procedures of assisting with an emergency birth. Using Wikipedia for research,